Now that you have a little bit more time to cook, why not start perfecting your skills on the methods that take a little more time? These are the methods that you've ignored because you just don't have the time until now. Because these are the days to braise. Today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code, every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cook's Code. Hey, welcome back to the Carefree Cook's Code, everyone. Uh, you know we're live every Tuesday at noon Eastern time, and if you're looking for any past episodes of the Carefree Cook's Code, go to uh, my Facebook uh, page where it says videos, or you can scroll through about 400 free videos on my YouTube channel, and now you can even follow me and what I'm cooking for dinner every night, along with how I did it when you follow me on Instagram as well. Search for Chef Todd Moore on Instagram. This is my... Uh, bake, oh, uh, chicken parmesan baked ziti I did the other night. Really cool. You know how I was able to do that? Uh, because I'm a carefree cook. I create my own recipes. I bring friends and family together. Not so much lately. Uh, but I learn every time I cook. I create my own cooking style because I practice pro methods and I love my cooking. We're all back together again, carefree cooks, long time no see, huh? <laughs> you know, I had so much cook, uh, fun cooking dinner together last night. It was so cool. I'm most certainly going to do that again, uh, probably tomorrow. Uh, so look for notifications on my Facebook page here. And I sincerely hope that everyone is doing well, that you're protecting yourself the best that you can. You're staying safe. Uh, I want you to be safe from all the perils that are out there now, this is a really stressful time. And, you know, there's still so much unknown that I want to urge you to listen to the experts. The expert people take their advice, even if it's inconvenient. It most probably will be inconvenient. Do it. I say protect yourself until we know exactly what's going on here, which I don't believe that we really do know exactly what's going on. But if you promise me <laughs> that you're going to do everything you possibly can, stay away from other people, stay inside as much as you can, I'll promise you that I will help you through it, okay? Stay inside, stay away from everyone else until we know what's going on. That's not the opinion of a doctor. I'm not a doctor. Uh, that's an opinion of a reasonable person who cares about you, all right? So let's not make it so serious. I've got a what am I for you today. We've done a lot of serious what am I's. Uh, so tell me in the <laughs> and trues and falses and so on. Tell me in the comments section below. Look at this photo very closely. What are those things? And tell me in the comments section below, what is the what am I? I'll give you the answer at the end of the Carefree Cooks Code today. Hey, look, we're sitting uh, pretty pretty pretty, aren't we? Right? We're, we're sitting pretty. Carefree cooks, I think, are going to fare very well in an environment where restaurants are closed and there's uncertainty and fear surrounding delivery and takeout food. And, you know, you got to be prepared for this because most restaurants, I, I know, I know restaurants very well. I know their profit and loss sheet and most of them can't survive on takeout orders alone. I believe uh, that you're going to see a lot of them closing too. And I gave you my tips for safe delivery and safe takeout during last week's carefree crisis cooking episode that we did. So go back and look at that. But when you heat food, keep this in mind, this is an important thing. When you heat food, you kill bacteria and viruses. So be sure that any delivery food is hot, even if you got to put it in the oven and reheat it yourself. But food that you cook in your own kitchen is probably best. That's the best way to go. And this is where you can take your carefree cooking skills and give of yourself to someone else. Think about this. Make some extra food. Text a friend that you're going to leave it outside their door 
and then get on your phone, <laughs> FaceTime, and virtually eat together. You're both going to feel really, really good about it. Look, I'm not trying to sound like I'm gloating here. Well, I kind of look a little bit like I'm gloating there, but I'm, I'm not trying to gloat. E even though this picture looks like I'm gloating, it was taken years ago. I was probably gloating about something else. Or, you know what I think that is? That's the wing dance. I think the wings are ready. That's what that is. Look, I want peace, love, and health for everyone. Everyone. This is a time of calm. But if you're watching any of those food shows on TV, which I normally don't do, but I've had some time to do it, you're starting to see everyone come over to our way of thinking now. Is that Gordon Ramsay screaming at children? <laughs> are all the, the adults done with his shtick? There are no adults afraid of Gordon Ramsay anymore. He's got to move on and scare children out of cooking. <laughs> what is going on? I've been teaching dependable methods of cooking that bring out confidence and creativity since 2008. And today's challenges are pushing all these celebrity chefs over to our way of thinking. Just this past Saturday, just three days ago, we were live together from my kitchen here in Baltimore and I showed you how to make sauces for one person from this tiny little pan here. Cute pan, right? But my overall topic on Saturday was comfort. I want everyone to find the comfort in their cooking. And if you missed last Saturday's live class, again, you can watch it right here on the Facebook page. It's probably right below this video or go to YouTube where you're going to find me talking about comfort because food is comfort, especially in tough times. And cooking is comfort to me. Helping others is always a comfort to me and a comfort to them. So instead of cooking as a competition, rather than going back to host their elimination cooking shows and they forget entirely that their cooking has always been about entertainment, has always been about competition, but now celebrity chefs are starting to change all their recipes. I listened to Bobby Flay on Sunday. He was on TV and he read humbly read an essay about how he's cooking more simply now, how he's looking for more comfort in his food. And he starts this essay out with, and this is direct quote, today I'm talking to you not as the high flying battle till I burn down the building iron chef that you see on the food network, but as a father of a young professional just starting a career. He's softening, right? He goes on to say about chefs, firing up our stove is our comfort zone. And if we ever needed comfort, it's now. I finally agree with Bobby Flay. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It only took a worldwide pandemic for that to happen. But look, the advice that I have heard all week long on TV from these TV chefs is all of a sudden that simpler is better, that comfort is most important and I really, <laughs> I really like their message, finally. But what happened? What happened to the dandelion mash and frise salad with pomegranate lychee fruit vinaigrette that you wanted me to make last week? Where were you? <laughs> you weren't ahead of this because now, oh yeah, now it's all about pantry cooking. Now it's all about whipping up great meals from what you already have on hand instead of letting a recipe or a celebrity chef tell you what to go out and buy. Wow. <laughs> that is a big shift for them in a very short amount of time. So all these celebrity chefs are now on YouTube. Uh, they're doing Facebook live broadcasts. They're cooking from their home kitchens and they're giving the advice that any cooking is good now. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be overly produced and highly ent entertaining. Bobby, put the cat down. What's he doing with it? Bobby, it hasn't gotten that bad yet. Bobby, it's okay. Did we run out of mesh and frise? I, I, I don't like where Bobby's headed. I, I, Bobby, I'm here for you, brother. It's not that bad. You're going to get to burn down iron kitchens again real soon. But for now, put the cat down, please. Because now 
comfort and confidence and pride are the keys to cooking, right? Isn't, isn't that what they're saying now? Are, are they saying, are they really saying that it's not what you cook, but how you cook that matters? Are they, are they saying this? Is the entire food media population now saying if it's good to you, then it's good? <laughs> I mean, I think they're starting to say that it's not about fine cooking, it's cooking coarse. And if that's the case, if that's what they're starting to say, they're about 12 years too late. They are way behind us, the carefree cooks. But that's not what I'm here to talk to you about today. Like I said, I'm not here to gloat. We're here together today to talk about the low and the slow. And now that we have time to cook, let's use the cooking methods that are gonna take more time because they're the ones that yield different results than the quicker cooking methods. They are the things that have so many advantages that the other methods do. And that's why these are the days to braise. That's our theme song. <laughs> okay, it sounded like a soap opera to me, the days to braise. The braising and stewing are combination cooking methods that use both dry heat and moist heat. It's that simple, they do both. And in both of these methods, braising and stewing, the first step is usually to brown the main item using dry heat and then to simmer the food in a liquid. And combination cooking methods are most often used for less tender but more flavorful cuts of meat, but also for poultry and vegetables. This is, this is a common misbelief and to be honest, one that I've perpetuated myself that braising and stewing is only meant for tough cuts of meat, but that's not true. Braised poultry, you can braise chicken, right? Braised duck is already tender. Even braised vegetables that don't need tenderization, right? These are all items that can easily be braised. And braising and stewing, they're the combination cooking methods, again, because they use both dry and moist heat, and they use direct and indirect heat. But the real difference between braising and stewing is simply the amount of liquid that they use. Braising and stewing are very similar and they're great cooking methods once you have the time because braising and stewing can tenderize tough cuts of meat, like I said, but that's not the only thing they do. They add a pronounced flavor due to these long cooking times. Come on, you know the flavor of like the carrot that has been cooking with the beef bourguignon, you know, for hours and hours. It's, it's rich, it's thick, it's savory, it's really, really good. Um, the other great thing about braising is that you can cook meats vegetables, um, even rice, even your starches in one pan at the same time. It's really a one pan dish. Uh, also, braising dishes, they make their own sauce. They come with their own songs. What could be better than that? You know, and the other thing is, this is one of the very few set it and forget it cooking methods. It's one of the few that once you get the liquid in the pan that you can walk away from and come back hours from them. There, there aren't many methods that you can do that with. At least there aren't very many methods you should be doing that with. And I hate to put it this way. It's a lousy analogy, but it's kind of like a crock pot when you don't have a crock pot or when you don't care about owning a crock pot. This is that way of cooking. Cock Crock pot cooking is braising. And, you know, I don't own a lazy cooker, so I really can't comment on that. But let's go through the procedure if you don't have a lazy cooker. And here's the procedure for braising. Number one, you're gonna cut, trim, prep any of the meats, things that need to be braised, right? Cutting your vegetables into consistent sizes. But now is really the time for your boning knife because the boning knife is what you're gonna to need to remove any fat or elastin or connective tissue that is not gonna cook away. Remember, white fat, soft white fat that you can like squeeze between your hands, that's the kind of fat that renders away. That's the kind of fat that melts. But the shiny silver skin, the long elastin, that doesn't cook down. And imagine is it, if it doesn't dissolve in heat, imagine what that's like for, to chew on and to digest. So the elastin, the silver skin, the things that don't cook down under heat, they need to be removed with your boning life. 
And this is where you might dredge the item in flour if you want. It starts the thickening agent for your sauce. We're going to talk about that in a minute because there's a lot of alternatives that you can do. Uh, the next thing is, as if in a saute method, you're going to heat your pan and then add some fat until it starts to striate. And now here's another difference between braising and stewing. In braising, you want as much contact with the heat without submerging the item. A braising pan is a much wider pan, has a much larger diameter, but it has much shorter sides because braising has a steaming element to it. An item in braising isn't totally submerged in the liquid. There's a, like a headspace gap, we call it, between the top of the liquid in the pan and the top of the lid or the bottom of the lid, which allows for like flavorful steam to circulate in the pan. And of course, heat rises, hits the lid, cools, falls down, condenses, rises. It begins this um, cyclic convection of steam. But with stewing, the food is supposed to cook entirely in a moist convective method by simmering or poaching. And, and you're supposed to let the moisture evaporate in stewing. That's why a stewing pan is more like a saucepan. It has a narrower diameter, but taller sides, right? Much higher sides because you're going to fill it up with liquid. You're going to take the lid off. The item will be totally submerged, but you want the fluid, the liquid to evaporate. Uh, a braising pan in a commercial kitchen is called a rondeau. And you see one, look for it next week, or if you watch the, the replay, you see one in the opening uh, video of every single Carefree Cook's Code, uh, where we're, I think we're making beef bourguignon in that, but you see a rondeau there. Uh, the next thing you want to do is uh, brown the food on all sides with direct conductive heat. And this is where you're going to get the pan nice and hot, again, like you're about to saute. So whether you're braising or stewing, browning the item first is the same. Again, you're rendering fats into the pan. You're, you're taking minerals, things from the item and creating a fond. Now, you might choose to remove the meat from the pan here and continue or leave it in there you know, and just go along because the next thing you're going to do is add all the other ingredients, uh, the aromatics, right? Are you using uh, onions, carrots, celery, uh, daikon, radish, parsnips, uh, lotus root, any kind of hearty vegetable that you can put in there. You don't want, you don't want to, you know, put little small button mushrooms in for five hours. They'll be gone. But now is the time to subject those, those hard, hearty root vegetables to direct conductive heat. We're going to saute them, right? So remember also about the vegetables and stuff to match your knife skills to your cooking method. These days to braise are not the days to use the tiny little brunoise cuts, the things that you might put in a chicken salad, right? You don't use them for braising, they'll disintegrate. They'll be totally gone after five hours. This is where you're gonna use your medium or large dice because eventually they're gonna be really tender, really fork sized uh, by the time you're done cooking and you don't want them to be mushy and fall apart. So you have to match the size of your items in a lot of regards. This has to do with your prep to the method that you're cooking them in. So this is where you could add flour if you wanted to create a pan roux, or you could spoon in a previously made roux, or this is where you get your cornstarch slurry ready. If you're not on a wheat diet, if you're gluten-free, something like that, this is where you get your arrowroot ready or your thickening agent. Or here's another thing, you could delay the whole thickening thing for a little while. This is my favorite thing to do is deglaze the pan with a flavorful liquid and then let it reduce until it's almost dry. And if you're cooking meats or game, things that are heavily flavored, I'd recommend a red wine. If you're cooking poultry or vegetables, I'd probably still recommend a red, a red wine, but a, you could match a white wine to it. Use chicken broth. You don't always have to cook with wines and alcohol. I like to use brandy or cognac or port, you know, these are, these are very strongly flavored things, but braising is going to mellow all this stuff out. I think about things that would complement the flavor of what I'm braising without overpowering it. Now, remember in braising that the sauce is going to reduce, right? It, the flavors are going to intensify dramatically over all this cooking time. And if your wine tastes really bad in the glass, 
You know, if you're buying really cheap wine, think about that flavor being intensified five times. I mean, if, if your wine is bad in the glass, your wine is going to be five times worse in your braise. Uh, you add the wine, you let it reduce, evaporate until it's almost gone. Again, you don't make a sauce out of wine. It's too acidic. The wine flavor of the grape goes into other items in the food. So we reduce it au sec as we say in French culinary. So now's the time to add your cooking liquid, liquid and that's probably chicken, uh, beef, or vegetable broth, right? A flavored liquid, no water. Nobody ever heard of braising in water. Uh, and again, remember, if you're braising, the ingredients are covered halfway, leaving that space for the steam. But if you're stewing, the ingredients are covered entirely with the lid off. You want the liquid to reduce and evaporate. But one of the keys to braising is having an acidic liquid. Now, I just said you don't make a sauce out of wine because it's too acidic. But in braising, you can certainly add some wine to the braising liquid. Don't fill the pan halfway up with a bottle and a half of wine. That doesn't make any sense. You fill it up with beef broth, you can add a little bit more acid from the wine because acids break down the connective tissue in meats. So this... This is the tenderizing effect you've been looking for. If you don't have an acidic uh, ingredient in your meat-based braise and it still comes out chewy, that's why. Tomatoes, uh, tomato paste, citrus juices, flavored vinegars, uh, condiments, acidic condiments, or like I said, wine, port, cognac, things like this. This can be added to the liquid as a flavoring to achieve the result that you want. And it'll help tenderize as well. And if you made a roux in the previous step, well, the liquid will start to thicken. You've already coated your item in flour, but if you skipped that early roux part, then now is the time to add your thickening agent, the one appropriate for your diet, uh, to the cooking liquid as it heats up because the temperature, the optimal temperature is 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 degrees Celsius. That's the temperature of gelatinization of starches. So add your thickening agent while the liquid is still rising in heat. Or look, you can further delay the whole thing and thicken the braising liquid at the very end with the roux to take full advantage of the steaming effect. Once you thicken the liquid, you're not going to get as much steam. If you removed the meat from the pan before, now's the time to put it back in, cook it in a moist convective method so it's gonna add its flavor and get the moisture from the pan. Lastly, uh, this is important, cover the pan. In braising, we cover the pan. Bring the cooking liquid to a very soft simmer on the stovetop. You don't wanna see any bubbles. If you see any bubbles, that's too high. You wanna barely see movement and convection. If you do see any bubbles, they should be around the edge of the pan, not in the middle. So you can continue braising or stewing on the stove top, get that temperature real low. Sometimes it's, it's hard, especially on a gas stove. This is one of the drawbacks. Everybody loves gas stoves. I don't think it's that big a deal. Uh, but one of the drawbacks of a gas stove is a lot of times it's either off or too hot. You can't get a gas stove with just a tiny little flame on it. So this is actually better on an electric or a conduction stove. Uh, or you put it in the oven. Uh, in an oven safe pan, take the rubber handle off it. Make sure your pan is safe. No wooden handles or anything. Uh, set your oven to 250 degrees Fahrenheit or about 120 degrees Celsius for as long as you can. And lastly, you know, no worries about an internal temperature. I mean, a braised item is not going to be rare. <laughs> I could tell you that. Do you like your beef bourguignon rare or medium rare? They, that's not it. It's not going to be unsafe either after it cooks for five hours or six hours or eight hours because the goal in braising is to flavor and tenderize. And when your meat falls apart under the fork, when your carrots are soft and flavorful, you have come to the end of your days to braise. Uh, but there's one more last important difference between braising and stewing. Again, braising is lid on, stewing is lid off. And the idea behind this is that you want to capture the moisture and use the steam in braising, but you want to reduce the liquid in, in stewing, letting it evaporate as, as it cooks. But, you know, again, these methods, they're entirely up to your interpretation. I mean, stewing doesn't normally get a thickening agent. 
reduction should be the thickener in a stew, but I usually do put one of those brown roux cubes from my freezer into the stew, or I might add tomato paste to my stew to tenderize the meat. I can borrow an element from one to the other. Uh, you could also remove the lid from your braising pan and let that liquid reduce further to make a thicker sauce if you wanted. You could puree, like take the meat out, puree all the vegetables to thicken up your sauce too. Look, you don't have to do any of it. You can do all of it if you want. Once you're confident in the method, then you can change them. Then you can alter the ingredients to make something new and exciting each time that you cook this way. Remember, do you remember this quote? Learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. You've heard me say that before. It's not mine, it's Pablo Picasso. But to me, this is one of the most comfort producing ways to cook. Think about the smells that fill your house for five, six, seven, eight hours, and you get something that's just so flavorful and, and soul warming and it takes so little effort. I mean, not even Bobby Flay is gonna argue with me about that anymore. Hey, has anyone seen his cat? If somebody find Bobby's cat, will you? Look, when it comes to seasonings in, st enough of that. When it comes to seasonings and stewed, oh, stop that. Yeah, when it comes to stews, uh, oh, seasonings, that's the last thing I wanted to talk about. Seasonings and stews and braised items, be really careful, okay? This stuff is gonna cook for a really long time, so you're not gonna use any fresh whole leaf seasonings, right? They're gonna wilt, uh, their flavor is gonna be gone in the evaporation, they won't last long in moist cooking methods. Uh, you wanna use dry seasonings, but like I said before, dry seasonings are like making tea. The longer you steep your tea, the stronger the tea is, right? So keep those dry seasonings to a minimum for long cooking because you can always adjust them at the end. And let's see who is using long, low, and slow cooking methods in our Carefree Cooks community for lifetime members of web cooking classes this week. Brenda's a brazen. Brenda is braising this week, whether she knows it or not. Uh, she was inspired by a fellow carefree cook and posted this dish. She put her own spin on that previous dish and she made up spicy Italian sausage. And that's what, what would she say? Uh, uh, spicy Italian, oh, she sauteed spicy Italian sausage, set it aside. Then she added chopped onions, sauteed until translucent, added chopped Napa cabbage to the pot, added almost two quarts, this is what I like, two quarts of this week's chicken stock. She's making her own stock, that's good. Uh, simmered it until the cabbage was tender. Uh, Brenda is learning every time she cooks because she also commented that next time she would use a roux to make it a bit thicker. Nice, I like when somebody learns. Uh, Rose made herself a chicken and pasta soup. I like this a lot. Talk about comfort food, man. Classic mirepoix carrot, onion, onion, celery, little cute pasta shells, nicely done. Kathleen has posted her first post. Welcome, Kathleen. This is her first post since joining our Carefree Cooks community, and I think she's going to fit in with her 10,000 plus new kitchen friends. This is northern beans and turkey kielbasa soup. I mean, <laughs> if that doesn't look warm and comforting, I don't know what is, man. And Stephen, yeah, he went there. Stephen, yes, fellow Carefree Cooks, Stephen went all classic French on us. Gorgeous beef bourguignon. Stephen said it took five hours, but worth every minute. He deglazed with cognac, this is what I'm talking about, simmered with some Pinot Noir, like I said, you can add it afterward, and he added those cute little pearl onions to it. I like that idea, the little pearl onions. By the way, speaking of wine, everybody keeps asking me questions about wines to use. Pinot Noir, is one of my favorites. But here's the thing, Pinot Noir is the name of a grape, not a brand of wine. Any winemaker can make a Pinot Noir. So my hint is, once you decide on the grape that you like, then go find the winemaker that treats that grape the best. Uh, lastly, Jill. Jill took an armful of canned beans from her pantry. She found some ground beef in the freezer. She whipped up a big pot of chili. Cool, right? 
She said only one problem with this, because she gave it to her kids. She got a FaceTime phone call shortly thereafter. Mom, can we have more of that exact same chili? <laughs> this is what happens when you just whip stuff up, right? There is no exact same chili, and that's another thing. So what? So what if you can't duplicate a dish over the coming weeks? Carefree cooks are always inventing something new. Our cooking improves every time we cook. So why would you ever bother writing things down or trying to repeat them? The next carefree creation is always waiting. And you know, lastly guys, I know I go over a little bit, but these are important times. This is a great opportunity to change the world here. It's in our hands. There is so much about this situation that is so horrible, that is so heartbreaking, that is so deeply disappointing to everyone. It's true. And we can all look backward. We can all focus on the terrible part of all this. We can all look at the current situation and freak out. I mean, that's the easiest thing to do. Just let your brain convince yourself that everything is doomed and you should be very, very afraid. But no, 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 no. <clears throat> Something very powerful that I learned back in 2007 from a really amazing author and speaker named T. Harv Ecker is that sometimes you should not listen to your brain. Sometimes you shouldn't listen to your own mind. It's your enemy. Look forward. Ignore the mind. Ignore your memory. Let your imagination take over instead. Think about how we can all get through the same crisis together and come out stronger on the other end. So now is the time to change your focus in all things, to examine the way that we've been living, to find a way to improve in the future. And I think that this is a great opportunity to improve the entire world because we have the entire world's attention right now. So what we do matters. Let's add some more levity again. <laughs> Let, let's go back to the what am I for today. We've got a hoe, there's a key, and that dish right there, that is Hawaiian poke. This is ho ke poke <laughs> oh, I love it. If you don't know what poke is, it's a diced up a tuna, usually marinated in citrus juices, in Hawaii, I could eat it all day long. The what am I today is hokey poke. Uh, do you know someone who has a lot more time to cook lately? Uh, well, it's time to tell them about the days to braise. So please like and share this video with your friends and fellow shut-ins because braising and stewing automatically make flavorful sauces. But if you'd like to figure out another way to bring five times more variety and five times more flavor into your cooking using the power of the five mother sauces. Oh, <laughs> crap, I gave it away. I meant to say using this one powerful pro kitchen practice, but now you know. It's about learning how to use the five mother sauces. So nonetheless, go to webcookingclasses.com slash five times, the number five, the word times, no spaces or anything to register for this week's free online class. It's absolutely free. Um, and I'm probably going to go uh, cooking live tomorrow between six and seven or so Eastern. Get ready for that. But until next Tuesday at noon Eastern time, this is Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a method to your long, low, slow, and tender cooking success. Bye everyone.